This is the Sea Eagle Razor Light Tandem Inflatable Kayak. I'm Jim Luckett from Sailboats to Go. I'm going to tell you a little about the kayak and then a lot more about putting a sail kit on it, one of our Sailboats to Go sail kits. So, the exciting thing about the Razor Light is that the whole boat, all air chambers, are what they call drop stitch construction, which means they can be high pressure and can be square in cross section or rectangular in cross section rather than having to be tubular. The way that is made possible is inside the air chamber the opposing walls are connected by a gazillion threads and that enables it to have the rectangular shape. That makes for thinner walls, easier paddling to reach over it, an altogether sleeker hull profile. It inflates the 10 pounds per square inch, which is very high for an inflatable boat, and that means firmness and rigidity, and therefore very low hull drag. The sail kit. This is the Sailboats to Go sail kit. It all fits in a bag that's uh, no bigger than a golf club bag. Everything folds, comes apart, so that there's no part uh, over four feet long. It consists of a front assembly that sits up in the bow and a rear assembly that sits behind the rear seat and the whole cockpit, except for a very small area in front and in back, is open and unencumbered by any metal pieces. So let's do the front assembly first. The main parts of the front assembly are the crossbar, which is going to sit there, and what I call the bowsprit is the same length, same material, but it has two U-bolts in it, and that's what makes the right angle connection between the two. When you slide this together, keep the crossbar toward the front of the U-bolt so that you leave a nice space here. We're going to use that space for attaching straps. And just lay that on there, center it just by eye, and tighten up the star knobs. Notice I'm not using any tools and I'm not going to use any tools. You have a, a few initial assembly steps when you first get your kit that require a screwdriver and a wrench, but that's it. Once you've done that initial assembly, uh, from then on, it's all no tool. This is the socket for the mast. The sailing term for it is mast step. Slide it onto the bow sprit and tighten it up again by hand, no wrenches. Uh, you want about two feet from the crossbar to the mast step. That will give you the proper steering balance when you're under sail. If you put it out here at the tip, you might get what's called lee helm, which would be a tendency for the boat to turn downwind, and that would make it hard to control. Putting it here, you should get a moderate weather helm, which is a moderate tendency to turn into the wind, which you counteract with just a little bit of steering force. If you want more weather helm, you would move it back further, closer to the crossbar. Now we're going to strap that on. We need four short straps and one strap that's slightly longer. That one longer strap is going to go up front. The four short ones are going to go there. There's a slot provided for the strap to go through. Come on, strap. Once you know it, when the camera's rolling, that's when the strap decides to give me a hard time. But it wasn't too bad. All right, put that strap through the slot, put it around the bow handle, and just connect it loosely for now, because we're gonna tighten it last of all the five straps that connect the front assembly. The last one to get tight will be that bow strap. Now we're gonna make a W pattern with the four short straps. One, 
two, three, four. Two verticals and two diagonals. The two verticals will hold the front assembly down. The two diagonals will hold it against shifting side to side. And the diagonals connect by slipping through the U-bolt. There's half my W. When we get to doing the rear assembly, it's going to be the same thing, a W pattern plus a strap going to the stern handle in that case. Go through there, through the D-ring, and buckle the strap to itself. Okay, check by eye for the assembly being centered. Now tighten up the straps. No particular order there. And now last step is tighten up that bow strap going to the front handle and give it a good yank. We want that nice and tight. Very good. All right. We're going to be adding the mast and the sail, but I don't want that flapping around while we're doing the rear assembly, so we'll come back to that. Now to the rear assembly. It consists of a crossbar with two or pin sockets, one on each end. Those are adjustable as to position. Depends on your comfort factors, your body mechanics, how far out you want that pivot point to be. I'm gonna set it on the second hole. That works good for me. This right angle piece could be removed from the crossbar, but it'll go in the bag just this way. And then there's an extension that snaps into it by means of a spring button. Okay, that's the complete rear assembly. It's a T. Set that on the stern of the kayak with the tip of the right angle piece resting on the splash step. Get five more straps, four shorts, and a medium. Make a W. And again, we're going to use the trick of slipping the strap into the extra space left by the U-bolt to do our diagonals. And do it so that the buckle ends up down near the side. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Come on, buckle. We want the buckle down by the side rather than out in the middle so that you don't accidentally release the buckle by leaning back against the rear assembly. Okay, we got our two diagonals. Now we'll do our two verticals. It's a very low profile W we make here in the rear. And we'll tighten up all those straps. And then the last step is the strap from the tip of the extension into the handle.
Sorry, Got the wrong strap. Okay, we tighten everything up by pulling on that last strap. This is our steering oar, or you might call it a ruddering oar. I mount the oar pin about a foot from the joint, and with the pin here on the hole, the joint accepts the spring button on the side. So that when the pin is in the socket, the blade will be vertical. And you can put the steering oar on either side and we secure it with a strap. This strap is just running through the oar pin clamp right here and goes around the bottom of the rear crossbar. So it's real easy to take it off, but it's uh, very effective in securing the oar in place. And just to head off a question that I sometimes get, what's this hole for in the bottom of the pin? It's not for anything uh, in the sail kit. The reason it's there is that we also use these in a, a rowing apparatus where uh, it's secured with a keeper pin that goes through that hole. But these sockets are too deep for that and when sailing you don't want to have to fumble around with a pin. You got too much else to pay attention to. The strap works much better. If you get tired of steering with the left hand, you can move the oar to the other side and steer with the right hand. If you want it to be easy to make that switch of left hand versus right hand, we offer as an option a second steering oar directly on sailboatstogo.com. And then you could sail along with both oars in place. You would only use one at a time, but you could switch hands anytime you want. The oar that you're not using would just trail along in the water, an insignificant amount of drag. Or you can put the oar that you're not using up on the rear deck, put the blade up on the rear deck like that. Or you can even come all the way over and rest it on the oar pin of the other oar. The only thing you have to bear in mind if you do use two steering oars is that when you come about and you make that complete turn across the wind, then you do have to momentarily pay attention to both steering oars and not have a loose steering oar with its blade in the water that might get caught underneath the boat as the boat makes that big turn. Okay, we've got the rear assembly on, we got the front assembly on now. we got to put the sail on and the lee boards. This is the mast. You saw how I just connected that together. It's nicely uh, uh, shock corded clips together like that. It's going to go in this socket like this, but we can't actually do that until we've got the sail there. I'm just demonstrating that. Let's get the lee boards. These are the lee boards. They perform the same function as a center board or uh, a dagger board. Uh, they perform half of the function of a keel. A keel uh, is a fixed, usually weighted, fin underneath the boat uh, and all of these fins have the basic function of allowing the boat to tack into the wind uh, and not just drift sideways when the wind is coming from the side or off the front quarter. That's what these are doing. The uh, keel, because of its uh, lead weight in it, is also helping with stability. These don't help with stability they are only to counteract the side forces of the wind when the wind is coming from the side or the front quarter. These screw into the leeboard mounts by means of these hand knob bolts. I'm going to loosen it a little bit just pause to let that noise go on. You got metal washer, rubber washer, leeboard You will be editing.
you got metal washer, rubber washer, leadboard shaft, and then nylon washer, which is a keeper washer.